Okay, welcome to Breakfast with the Masters. It's Friday, the 20th of March. March is almost over, guys. Um, got a question for you. I think today will be interesting and fun. Would you rather be lucky or good? Good and lucky, says Peter. Okay, I'll take both. Um, good would be more consistent. Well, you know, miners, and I live in miner heaven here, and you know, the guys that mine gold here, they're, they're saying is luck is where you find the gold, right? So maybe it's the same thing. You create your own luck. That's what they say, John. So I'm going to ask that question today during this trade. Now let me answer Jorge's lesson. Okay, so I just started to really incorporate swing reaction calculations into my routine. Okay. If I'm an intraday trading and only looking at the last two to three days, should I look at the past 20 swing regardless of how many days ago? Or should I look at the last three? No, you gotta, you got to look more than three. Still want to look at the past 20, 20 days or so. Okay. It's, it's not that you should know better. Uh, or Jorge, everybody should be doing this and almost nobody is. So you should go back at least... 20 swings up and 20 swings down is my rule and figure out what's the average size on the upside and the downside okay and you should do it on a regular basis on the commodities or currencies or stocks that you're trading whatever it is okay just so you know 20 up and down luck is where opportunity meets preparation yeah who said that that's a great comment good luck with the euro once i start first started trading then i lost all the money Ooh, luck is unconsciously generated success i want to be good Okay. Or says or swings and reactions. Oh, I just think of it regardless of direction, I want to know twenty up, twenty down. Twenty up, twenty down. Oprah said that, well then that makes me feel bad because I don't no offense to all of you, I really don't like Oprah. Hey Reese, how are ya? Anybody else loose on? Hopefully you guys can still hear me. I'm good. I missed you the other day. I just want to make, you know, I'm glad to, were you traveling? Anyway. Okay, I figured so. I'm just hoping you're okay. No, it's okay. Because I know a lot of people have caught the flu. I just want to make sure. From Neil Pert. Okay, I like that better. She probably stole it from Neil Pert. Anyway, let's talk about what we're going to, what we're going to talk about. So, luck versus good. Um, I mean, I feel sometimes like let me just check one thing, one second. Dang it. Yeah, I get in with that, and then I don't want to screw this recording up. Hang on. Hmm. Okay, well, I guess I've... Cross your fingers. All right, anyway, um... New York weather, snow today. All righty. Just what you need, right? All right, here's a question for you. But 72 here today, by the way. Sorry. Which means it's 92 in Phoenix. Um, how about this? When does patience turn into stubbornness? Have you ever thought about that? BG says it never does. Uh, Carlos. Hi, Carlos. How you doing? Carlos says it never does. Um, oh, Carlos says when you lose focus. Sorry. Um, uh, when you're breaking your written rules. Um, I think Reese says that's a razor's edge question. I think it is, which is why I asked the question. When I have a fixed idea. When you know you're wrong and refuse to shift position. Okay. Hi, Jaina. I don't have any patience, so I don't know. Okay. You're not careful and you're thinking about it, okay? When the mind is not open to new information, it does. You don't realize slight changes in price character, okay? When you lose attention or get bored, a few good losers can lead to this, says Peter. Seems to be a good point to consider. Okay, so I want you to consider that today as you watch as you watch me work my way through this trade. When I go from observing to something else. I'm not sure I want to ask what the something is that else is, Neil. But Okay, I get that. To a different, you mean a different state? Your frame of mind is the difference between patience and stubbornness. Okay. That's nice. I like that, Reese. 
Okay, so I want you to think about that. I want you to think about luck versus um, being good. This is kind of this is kind of a a funky trade. Um, and the interesting thing is, I know three or four people here either took this trade or attempted to take this trade, maybe on different time frames. Um, so some of you are going to go, oh, deja vu. So sit back and go ahead. You can throw tomatoes if you want, or you can make comments however you feel. Well, but let's think about that. So I'm looking at 60-minute Canada. And the reason I was looking at 60-minute Canada is if you look at it recently, it's 20-minute bars, you know, back um, 10, 15 days ago. They just they don't look like anything. They're just boring. Here I'll grab a. No, let me just. You can pull it up if you want later. They're just so Canada goes from moving, moving, moving to really you know kind of sideways. And sometimes the sideways just turns into even if even if it's a slanted move like this, it turns these bars because these are 60 minute bars. Look at imagine the 20 minute bars. They're basically 10 pips wide and barely moving, and they're gonna put you to sleep. So, you know, most of you have been, I've either, I've either talked about it in breakfast, so I know I have an evening. I have in the back of my mind that Canada's going to 146, 147. And, um, of course, you know, oil has been making new lows this week. So, eventually, that will prey on Canada again. Not that that's why I think Canada's going where it's going. I just think these uh, actual cash flow currencies, so the Aussie and the Canada, they went from being in favor to out of favor. And I don't think that's changed. So, you, let's just here's where I started. You can see, right? There's a trade over in here. I, could, I was long up here. Do you make that assessment uh, for the 20-minute or daily chart? Um, that was a daily long-term, Al. And um, I, I've been long Canada for a long, long time for the fund. Um, anyway, um, and this is a trade, um, was the end of a trade that uh, I ran up to. I don't even remember how high it went. But anyway, so I'm watching Canada now and just starting to, you can see this is last month just trying to keep my eyes on it and I see it start to sell off and I'm going hey okay hey Pe hey Petra how you doing hey look it's selling off that's a good thing for me right and uh, I'm just doing lines of maximum excursion okay take care Shane you're in Myanmar okay I heard it's pretty oh he's already gone right pretty I heard it's pretty um, okay so I'm just watching and um, I'm trying to get a feel for horizontal. Have we have we bottomed out? Are we going to make another leg lower? If you see this in 20 minute bars, I switched to 60s because this is like deadly dull. So I went to 60s, and even with 60s, um, the pivots are clean. That's what I like. But there's still lots of. I mean, if you're trading, if you were in this, you did this for two days and it went nowhere. Look at that just boring considering that the ATR is 25 so you got to use a stop of about 40 that's about barely the range of this does that make sense do you see why why, why I went from 20s to 60s so but I'm just kind of scoping stuff out and uh, I'm not even drawing horizontal lines at this point because I'm I'm casual, so I'm coming back like every day or two at this point. Hasn't hasn't caught my interest. Okay, and I see make a new low, close on its high, open on its low, close on its high, close on its high. Uh ooh. Haven't even here I didn't see that. So I wonder if this is a significant low. But even if it was a significant low, 
what exactly would I be doing with it? Nothing, right? So I'm watching and I and I write this to myself. Might be might have been a major low, but let's see what we have. So again, closing on our high, make a new high, close this near its low. Okay, so I box it in. Now I start to draw horizontal lines. A little more interested. Um I did some charting with somebody in mentoring bar by bar yesterday on their ensign. Okay. Can you see how I'm getting drawn in here? Yeah, casual, just kind of throwing a line here, maybe throwing a line here. Come back the next day, throw a line here. Hmm, this might be interesting. Let me put this in this horizontal line, and then you know what? Check back five or six hours later. Do this. All right, let me box it in. Maybe I'll get a little bit more interested. Okay, so I'm not attacking this with gusto. Just by drawing and watching price accelerate and then start to slow down, and then we get this type of movement, I get drawn in to start to refine what I'm drawing. Okay? I don't attack the market, I let the market draw me in. Okay? I start to put in logical pieces, and then I won't be ready to trade until. I feel like I'm in, in step with this market, but I don't try and get, st I let the market take me along. Do you understand what I'm saying? Now, when we do that, that day, day and a half, uh, the, the foundation material on Wednesday, Thursday, we're going to chart together a bunch of times, okay? Whatever you guys want to chart, things I've never seen before, okay? Bar by bar, and the reason why is because I want to see what you guys will do this live. You can see what each other sees, but also you can see how I start out and how I start to get interested in what I do. And it, you know, for example, somebody yesterday mentoring. Here's how they drew. Here's how they start their day out. Well, not anymore. Not after yesterday. First, they squeeze way in like this. Okay. Then they draw a median line from here to here to here, and put a major bottom in here and a major top in here, etc. Well, hey, a lot of people are doing this, okay? Then they go back to the right amount of bars, okay? But that's like looking at the 240 and deciding, you know, where the direction is and then going to trade the 20s, right? So instead, you get up in the morning, you don't have any lines on your chart, just page back two or three days and start to draw lines as you go forward bar by bar toward where the current price is and allow yourself to get drawn in by the market. You guys follow me? If that's not what you're doing, and you should never squeeze in. Never. That stuff to the left, meaningless. Go two or three days back and start anything further than back. The, the market doesn't remember that stuff, doesn't care. Okay? Okay, so as, as I see this action, I start to get drawn in, so I start to draw horizontal lines. I'm starting to refine what I'm looking at, but I didn't have any logic, and even if I did, there's no way to catch this low, So, but it's it's got my interest. So I'm watching, and it retests my high and starts to pull back. Okay, makes a low, closes on its high. What would I be thinking here? It's hard to erase bad habits, Perry. Yeah, it is, but you know, it starts with the next time you open up a chart, right? Start blank. Write down. I don't squeeze in. Two or three days, etc. Cetera, et cetera. Yeah, first, it's exactly right, Scotty. Is this a higher low? Right. So you know, I might say I might. I, mean, I didn't write it, but. This is also first first pullback, right? See it?
Make sense? If this is the low, this is the first pullback. All right, so don't actually retest it. Now we're retesting the top. So some bars have rolled off. That's all that's happened. Okay. And this is about as much data as I work with. May, you know, you can go in for that if you want, but that's about it. Somewhere in there. And so now we've got a new box. And this shelf is still holding up here. And you see it's been attacked a few times. And, you know, I don't have to count them, but one, two, three, and it doesn't hold. Now we're closing on our high. And that's a pretty aggressive looking bar. That's as aggressive or more aggressive than this run here. So this is a higher low, right? So, I, you know, I didn't, but I could have. I generally do on first pullbacks draw this automatically. Of course, that being said, I didn't draw it this time. And we'll see if that's meaningful or meaningless. Okay, so come up, make a high. Look at it, close on our low. So close on our high, make a high, close on the low. Um, I'm apparently was not Timmy says why wasn't it drawn and apparently not focused enough um, to have done it still still trying to figure some logic but I'm still trying to you can see me I see I'm still trying to find some frequency that makes some sense so this is our our run up and We've left a high, and now we're right back into this box. So I connect this high to this high. So I want to know, what would I want to know about these highs? Anybody? Speed, sure. Accelerating, what else? Highest highs or more range expansion? Yeah, exactly. Is this it, or are we going to continue to have more range? That's that's exactly what I'm thinking, Kai. Yeah, is this the top? Is this it? If that's it, then this ain't the bottom, is it? So, I'm searching for a top and or searching for a bottom. I don't know which mode I'm in yet. Right? My mat line of maximum excursion didn't end up being that important. So, not sure what I got here. And the reason why it's not so important is because there's a lot of sideways force here. Even though things t look like they have a direction, they're still kind of horizontal. Each one of the ways is kind of horizontal. Okay, that's just going to... Why don't you think that's not the bottom if the top is in? Well, if the top is in then we'll probably make a series of lower highs. And then I'll wonder if this is the bottom. I guess that's the way I should say it, Al. If this is the top, that's it? 123 to 125? That's not going to hold. Too narrow. Okay, so, but it's it's wide enough to trade, right? So we got it marked out. And look at this wide range bar. Now, at this point, I'll go ahead and expand this for you while I say this. Even though we're down here, we didn't close below it. We're just kind of just playing with it. But it's a nice sell-off. Nice, nice healthy sell-off. Okay, it stops at this prior low. So this is the mountain getting filled. And because of the way it got filled, it actually kind of left to stop, didn't it? If we get back down there I don't know if I'm, I'm interested but so price is meandering now it's pulling back up okay now it leaves a look at this bar yikes so we can see it's a series of really coiled ranges 
coil ranges, huge moves. Now, whether or not I, I wanted to buy this, my stop's about 40 pips, okay? So I could afford to stop at 123. I could certainly afford to, but I'm not really sure. If this is the volatility followed by this type of movement, I'm not really sure that I'm ready to jump into this. Does that make sense? And it's making lower highs. Now I have a lower high, right? So this bar, <clears throat> it's, yes, Paul, Paul says it's still rangy. It's, it's wicked rangy, isn't it? You, you could be long or short and get get chopped in this one so I'm not sure that I'm not sure that I want to play yet like I said you could you know if you believe in mountains and I do you could do this and have a stop at 123.95 and eh, I'm just eh on that I know I'd be underneath my stop and this is definitely a swing low now but I'm just it, this bar just just makes me say I don't I don't know. So let's see what happens. And I look at it. But here's the problem down here. This is that prior low where I said, hmm, maybe this was a major low. It's even off the screen, so really the market probably doesn't even remember it. But even if the market remembered it, and I, and I squeezed in, which I wouldn't do, and I'm not going to do, it's a mountain fill. There's no stop below it, right? This is the low low. So I know that this is not that reliable. There'll be people that'll try and buy this, but if we get anywhere near it, there'll also be breakout sellers if we get one tick below it. So I'm not that wild, and and I know. Look at these bars. I'm just not that wild about jumping in here make sense or would, would you get long here so in the back of my mind you might be able to tell at this point I'm kind of thinking about getting along but I'm, I'm really not I don't like the nature of these bars not and I don't mean that they're up or down it's just these are so wild Look at the size of my gonna go. How's that? Anyhow, that's not going to protect me. Well, even over here, it's not going to protect me. There's too many bars that are too large. So I just don't feel comfortable. All right, so let's see what happens. So I, I'm still kind of interested, but I'm not, I'm certainly, there's not enough logic for me to waste 40 pips. That makes sense? And I mean, Look, I could go 40. It's 20, 25, 26 is the ATR. I could go 40. I could go 50. Even 50 is not going to help me on these bars. So it's not even the uh, volatility thing. The ATR, these are crazy bars. These look kind of like yen bars. So I need a strong sense of logic, and I need some some areas... An area to trade that looks like it's uh, tamped down a little bit. Third drive down, sure. Absolutely. And it will, it will help keep you tuned. And I didn't mark it in, but I, I didn't mark it in for, probably, Timmy, because at this point I was like, should I? This is one of those. Now, how many of you taken a taken a trade where you were, you wanted the trade, the trade shows up, you know it's got warts, but you've been waiting for so long, you took the trade. So, out of five, okay, so um, a lot of people are saying yes, of course, sure. Okay, so, you know, I'm fighting with myself, and I do a fairly good job when I fight with myself of saying, you know what, nah, wait, wait till you're sure. It's just a missed opportunity. Wait till you're sure. I'm, I'm lucky. I have no pressure on myself right now. The fund has open positions, but every single open position is working. You know, they're just in long-term maintenance mode. I don't even have to look at them. And uh, so I trade when I want to. 
um, I'm doing I'm already preparing material for September um, I'm taking care of a lot I've got a lot of health things I'm taking care of so I don't have to trade if I don't want to so to me I think I did the right thing here is I'm, I'm debating it going hey, you know what this is a good chance to get long at 124 ish um, with a stop below the low and then I you know what that's not really a swing low I you know what I'm gonna pass so I'm still watching I have uh, I have a leaning to the upside but and I and frankly you know Peter Peter was asking about you know do I have alerts I'm I'm actually talking to the graybeards about it because they you know like Michael my buddy Michael's been with me forever Michael what do you think you know and we're debating it and you know it's well it's why don't I have this up here? Hang on, let me check. Change one thing on the chart. Um, uh, there we go. Um, you know, it's uh, it's late in the afternoon, and yeah, I so I just don't take the trade. I watch it. I'm still kind of watching, but and here's another chance. Retest the lows. I got another chance. Nah. But what I do do is go back and draw the line of maximum excursion. Just curious. And then, after I draw the line of maximum excursion, watch. Closes on its high. So I, I had three chances here to get long. Closes on its high. Closes on its high. I'm... I, um, and the Greybeards, I don't, you, for those of you that are new, the Greybeards actually, the guys that are awake are actually watching the session and they'll type comments. Michael's laughing at me right now because he remembers this day. Because what they said afterwards was, uh, told you. So you'll see. So we run up and we leave another lower high. See it? So when we leave the lower high, yeah, I don't feel so bad now. It just looks like it's compressing. One thing I do notice, however, though, is it's starting to get a little less, you know, crazy. It's starting to be normal volatility. It's starting to slow down a little bit. So I'm more observing. I, now, we are coming to the weekend, but I'm more observing in the sense that, okay, the volatility is normal. Is there an opportunity here? And, of course, what do we say? Is there is there an opportunity that I can exploit? Um, maybe, but I passed on this three opportunities down here. But now I'm making high, lower highs. So I'm kind of scratching my head. I still have the same idea in my head. But didn't bite down here. Had a long discussion with myself and then with the great beards about it. Didn't bite. Okay, so here we are coming into the weekend. Okay, and this is, yeah, here's um, Monday morning. Do you think there's someone really big trying to shake off the followers for their own reasons, or was this their collective participants just wacky? Um, I actually talked to my buddy at Royal Bank of Canada, and he said, you know what, it just it wasn't me. It was just wacky. I'm, he said I was thinking the same thing as you. Although, you know, the Bank of Canada is happy because that tends to keep speculators out of the market, right? Like me. Guys that are, if this is not a whale, and it isn't. If it's not me, it's not him. I mean, we know who's, we, we can count, you can count on one hand the people that are capable of doing this. It's not him. It's not me. And we know the other guys. Um, it's just the market is just in a, in a wacky mood. Which kind of puts me off, right? So, I, I, it's mon Monday morning. I get up. I see this bar. I'm like, what in the hell? And I get quite a chuckle from the graybeards because they're, they're saying, tongue-in-cheek probably. I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt so I don't have to slap them. Hey, boss. Probably should have bought some down here, huh? Peter George Soros couldn't trade his way out of a toilet. Okay? George Soros is a crook. I know George Soros personally. 
and I have for more than 30 years. So, and he knows what I think of him. He's an ass. Yes, you're correct, Al. Um, would you have been trading for the, the for that yen bar then, though? Um, well, I don't ever, I don't really like these bars unless I'm causing them, right? But, okay, how many of you did? Yeah, I, I'll tell you a, a, a bunch of George Soros stories. Maybe a, maybe we'll do it a purpose person in September, but also some more in Buffett stories. Anyway, how many of you did the homework? Oh, yeah, when we chased them down with the Bank of England, yeah. Also the uh, New Zealand Central Bank as well, sure. Yeah, his story is that he made money. He got his ass kicked, for those of you who didn't know. Um, and okay, well, if, you're, if you didn't do the homework, it's a great exercise to do it over the weekend. This is, I mean, it's one bar, but it's parabolic, right? Yeah, okay, um, at least one person sent me the setup and said, is this where it's about to go parabolic? All I wanted you to do is find me pre-parabolic and then the parabolic move. That's what I wanted you to find. Because I want you to, your eyes to get used to seeing the parabolic portion, okay? Maybe some stories of build a bear group? Sure, why not? The, the conference won't be bugged. Well, Timmy will actually have security there, just so you know. You won't know who they are, but we'll have some security from the Queen. So believe me, it won't be bugged. We'll have a clean room. So we have a wide range bar. And I don't trade for this, but if you think about it, this is para this is parabolic, isn't it? Should I also use the bar count when measuring the last twenty moves? Um, you can. Sure, why not? The more you know about it, the more intimate you are, Jorge, the better you'll be. Okay? These are your markets. You know, if you want to trade with the whales, you don't have to have a billion dollars and be a whale, okay? If you want to trade with us, become more and more intimate, you'll begin to see how we manipulate markets, um, how the market gets manipulated by everybody leaning the wrong way, how it's ripe for entry um, like I said the more the more you practice the better off you're going to be the more you know about your market so don't take anything at all for granted learn the bar count learn the at normal swings I know there's people out there that keep it on an Excel spreadsheet that's okay you don't know you can have Ensign updated li live or e signal but I like to actually do it by hand. I like to do everything by hand. I just think you learn more. Your eye learns it. You mean the markets are manipulated, not a random walk? Well, the markets are definitely not a random walk, but they're not. Oh, don't you shouldn't get the feeling that they just go up or down because they're manipulated. You can only manip manipulate a market for a short period of time. I don't care how much money you have, right? So. That's why you have the same advantage as a whale, because I can push the market, right? But I can only push it for so long. But the other thing about it is, if you get if you get intimate with any one of these markets, you can tell what's normal behavior and what is behavior that's being forced. Okay? And you can trade along with that. So again, the better you know your market. If the market's in a range, it's more like a random walk. That is true, you can. There is, in fact, Andrew's talked about that. Uh, Shane and I were talking about it over the weekend. He called me. He's been doing his homework, and he he wanted to know about a complete uh, statement that Andrew's made, which was uh, motion both random as well as uh, I don't know what the correct correct word would be, but frequency oriented. Two types of motion flowing okay well, I'll use that word um, random and flowing okay and um, there there are two phases of the market there's two parts of the market part of it is there's sometimes the market is directionless right you ever heard of the word Brownian Brownian motion sometimes the markets like that if you don't just think of randomish All right, so Monday morning, I'm done with breakfast. 
you know, I get the up on the screen above my head, I get the, hey, boss, maybe you should have bought some from the Graybeards, the guys that are gone on vacation. And so I type in, for me and for them, okay, I get this kind of bar and another follow-through bar. I, I need some of these. And I don't want to get long at 127. I don't want to get long at 126. Where do I want to get long? I want to get long down here, right? Make sense? This was an opportunity. I didn't. I didn't think I could exploit it. It didn't work for me at the time. On another day, it might have worked for me. Um. It is what it is. But I have to deal with the fact that it's now 200 points higher. Matt Cube says, it does, but you're starting to sound like me having an idea ahead of time. Well, here's the problem, Matt. It's what you do when these bars unfold. Okay? As these bars unfold, if you, Matt, and you, you were, you're thinking about buying, you want to buy, you decide not to buy, then these bars unfold. It's what you do now that decides whether or not you are in control of yourself or not in control of yourself. Whether you've mastered yourself or not mastered yourself. I don't want to get long. Does anybody want to get long up here? I mean, you do in a certain sense, right? You have that urge. Gosh, wish I was long. But this is not a trade location. So, even though it might go higher, I have no interest. I have less interest here, even though it's higher than I do here. But I do feel a more urgent sense, and I definitely now feel the logic that, God damn it, if I get a pullback, I want to get long in here, right? So, I, I know where I want to get long. I'm just not long. That's right, BJ and Pat says, when it speeds up, you told us to slow down. Exactly. So I look at it, and of course I got heartache, so to speak. I'm not that emotional, but I feel like, ah, oh, well, maybe that, maybe I should. This is one that I took pictures of and put in my folder to look at at the end of the month and see, you know, did I miss something here? Was there something I missed that I should have got into this trade? So I, this, I take shots of things. I shoot pictures of everything I stock, first of all, but I also keep a folder of things to look at at the end of the month that, you know, hey, did I miss something? Was I too timid? Was I too aggressive? Um, did I read this wrong? But I don't do it in the heat of the moment. All right. So next bar unfolds. Make a higher high. Doesn't close on its high. Got a new box, and look at the size of the box. It's 200 pips wide. I could just trade the box and make money. So test the top, test the top, test the top, test the top. Starting to pull back a little bit. Get a lower high and pull up. And retest the bottom. Retesting the high, eating at the high. Now, again, there's no opportunity for me here. I know, and I get these charts from you guys, and we, talk, we talked about this on Monday. Somebody said, um, you know, we had a three-cent pullback. Oh, I take it back. It was on Wednesday, evening with the master. We had a $3 pullback in a stock that had gone up 30 bucks, and they were asking, is this an area where you'd be interested in buying? Okay, well, here, look, we're pulling back, and I know we pulled back 50 cents, but can you get long here? Do you want to get long here? Really? I mean, I, I know I, I'm itching to get long, so to speak, but not here. And I have no stop. I got no friends. We're in the, I know, and I know it stopped and turned higher, but does it make any sense? Yeah, it's just price fluctuating. So, Matt says you'll send me the check. Okay. So, of course, it eats through the high, and even though it goes higher, so, if you're fighting with yourself internally, of course, as this makes a new high, 
you're kicking yourself, right? Oh, crap, I should You know what? I know what the rules are, but I should have bought this. No, you shouldn't. This is just an opportunity loss, just like this. Okay, I know it's now 250 pips higher, but it's just an opportunity loss, okay? It's okay. If you trade down here and break the rules, you're reinforcing bad habits, and it's going to cost you money long term. Same thing here. If you trade here, this time you might have made money. Do these okay? So these small bars suggest big take big somebody big taking them in or quietish? Asked Timmy. Um, this is actually the normal volatility, but remember, look at all the energy prices expended. It's got to it's got to rebuild some energy, and it needs to come back to a normal volatility. This type of activity isn't. Canada runs, and then it ranges, and then it runs, and then it ranges. But this is unusual. This is just one bar spike so last four bars real small chewing out that high says Timmy what about that I think this is just the market people that can't help themselves retail traders cannot help themselves get okay, broke this high breakout buyers breakout buyers then some people that were looking here they're finally convinced, you know what, I need to get high. M listen, most people buy because, why do most people, I'll ask you, why do you think most people buy a commodity, a currency, a stock? Because it's going up. John's got it. Okay. It, they don't even have a rhyme or reason of why or where. It's just, okay, this is going up. It, it'll probably go more. Let me just, yeah, they see other people buying it. Let me just get some. Okay. And that's like throwing darts at the dartboard. That's impulse trading. We don't do it. So we make a high. And I look, I understand in this case it pays off. But if you do this long term, you will lose money. So for those of you who are still be trying to become consistently profitable and you're not ready to admit that you do trade in here, this is some of your problems. Or maybe you're trading up here, even worse. Oh, man, it's making a new high. i got to get some. Y you have to stop. You've got to stop that behavior, okay? Trade location is primo. <clears throat> Had somebody yesterday in mentoring, and we were talking about a trade, and it was a loser. And it was also a poor setup. They had read the market wrong, and it was a poor setup. And as we talked about it, you know, as we as we talked it through, um, the question was, well, what? If there's anything I can tweak here to make this work? And my answer was quite simply, why do you want this trade? I mean, I know you haven't had a trade for four days, but. Do you really want this trade? Think about it. There are trades that you really don't want. Don't ask for trouble. You'll get it. So be in control of yourself. Trade when you want to trade it. Okay, so, you know, I'm left thinking about down here. We're up here. There's nothing for me to do at this point other than observe, right? So first pullback. See it? That's me. I keep making bad reads and improper fork designs. Well, Peter, as the market speeds up, slow down. And don't trade until you are satisfied. You know, I've had, um, I've got somebody here today um, that was genuine enough to let us, Peter, you, you weren't here for it, but at the end of the year, uh, I don't know if you guys can tell me, was it last no this last November or the November before? We went through his trading statistics, his, his entire year trading statistics. And um, when he first came to market geometry, he was trading 130, 140 trades a month. October of last year, says Al. 
130, 140 trades per month. Okay, and he was trading on 60 60 minute bars, so it's almost impossible. Crazy stops, crazy trades, totally impulsive. He'd be out of a trade and back in another trade on 60 minute bars like three minutes later. Okay, let me give you an update. 15, 16, 20 trades a month now. Lowered his time frame. Cut down the number of things he's watching. Okay, The impulse trading is gone. Starting to book some profits now. M huge changes in what he's done. Okay, it, So, um, and, and the gentleman I had yesterday in the last six months he's he's made so many changes to his trading I can't I can't even list them all okay and they're both making tremendous progress so you know Peter you gotta especially if you're from the floor you have this urge to trade 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 it's like a drug dude um, and I don't know if you know at one point I spent a year the CME paid for me to spend a year they gave me a floor on the Mercantile Exchange, and I had 3,500 people come through, 3,500 prof professional traders, average experience over 20 years, because they were trying to help them make the transition from being on the floor to screen traders, and uh, learned a lot about teaching traders. And the first thing was, what a drug it is for guys that stand on the floor. It used to piss me off when Shane and yourself used to tell me that you have to master yourself, says Pat. I used to wonder, how do you master yourself, and what the hell do they mean? I would ask BJ this. I now know what you mean. It makes so much sense. But it took a while, didn't it, Pat? It, it sounds, yeah, a year, says Pat. It, it sounds like a throwaway comment, but it's not. It's, it's everything. It's so much more important than the lines or anything else. If you can't master yourself, it's nowhere I can go. Oh, years, you said. Okay, so it took BJ and Pat years. It's, you know, it takes, a, if you don't have that, you got nothing. So we'll also obviously, uh, I'll give you stories and stories and stories about that in September if you guys want. So <clears throat> David says, over many months, I am changing. Yeah, I mean, it's a transformation, okay? But it's something that it, you have to go through. <clears throat> it is hard. Kai says it can be hard. It is hard. It's damn hard. Okay, well. Peter says, I'm trading less, but still stupidly. Okay, well, you know what? Trade smaller. Slow down. And it'll slowly. David says, "It's this is different, David, David L. It's hard, but it pays better. Yeah, just slow down. I'd rather have one trade that makes sense and is a good trade than five trades that make me happy because I made five trades. It's the hardest thing that I had to learn, says Pat. Yep. And I watched Pat and BJ transform. First, first two and a half years were damn ugly, don't you? Don't you think, Pat? So, it's uh, <coughs> <coughs> excuse me. I've got a great group of people that I'm mentoring right now, and it's really satisfying to watch the changes um, as as they go on. It doesn't happen overnight. Pete says, "I never give up, but I may go insane first. No, we're gonna, we'll get you there. Okay. You're in the right place. Just keep active. Keep asking questions. You know, if there's something in the back of your mind. Hey, Robbie. Robbie says, I'm really enjoying my mentoring. I feel so lucky. Yeah, Robbie, we had a great session yesterday, didn't we? And you're making tremendous progress. So, and, um, you know, Robbie can tell you. For most of you, it's a long ways from where you are to where you need to be, but we'll get you there. Tell Pete everyone feels that way, and then you'll eventually get it. So, Pete, we've all the people here and me and Shane have all been there, okay? So we'll walk you through it. Don't blow your capital. Trade small. Take your time. We'll get you there. I live every day for these sessions. Okay, good. I, I'm well, I, you know, I hope you're watching the replays. Um, middays are good, you know, the market map sessions are good as well. 
just slow down, relax, and we will get you there. Okay? Kind of church. Yeah, it is kind of, well, okay. I don't, maybe it's a religion, I don't know. Kind of a meditation, maybe. I don't know. Anyway, so, Pastor Tim, oh my God, I've gone from Dr. Tim to Pastor Tim. Okay, so, what is this? Let's take a look. But it's also, in a weird way, I don't know if I can call it the first pullback. It's kind of the, let's look at it. It's kind of the first impulse. How about that? Let's use that word. I want to show you why I'm drawing what I'm drawing. And this, again, so in September, we're going to do a lot of this. But All right, so here's our run-up. Here's the first pullback, right? You know, I could get ordained on the internet for like five dollars and then it would be official. Anyway, here's our first pullback. Now I put in the line of maximum excursion, see it, put it in dotted. Here's the first here's our first pullback, and now we've got an impulse higher and then we pull right back down. So this is our first impulse after the run-up, right? Do you understand what I'm saying? I don't know if I have the right word for it, but I want you to follow the rhythm. Fair enough, Father Tim. I'm thinking uh, I, I should be a like, friar, like uh, what's the fat guy in uh, Robin Hood? Friar Tuck? Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully I won't look like that in September, but right now I'm a little black outfit with one of those white collars. No, I don't I don't think so. I'm more like the brown robe kind of guy probably. But anyway. Alright, so we let's get the rhythm of this. We squirt higher, we get a pull back, and now we've impulsed again, and now we're pulling back. Okay? So I draw two lines. I draw this maximum excursion up here. See it? And I draw this maximum excursion down here off the first pullback and then the low off of this impulse. Okay? And they're not the same frequency, but they're relatively close. But you can see it, they're kind of expanding. So I have a kind of a feeling, and I'm also kind of boxed in. I suppose I should have this as well, but I think you'll see in a minute why that's not drawn. But we'll leave it there anyway. So <clears throat> we don't spend much time down here at all. And squirting along that line. And so now you can see this line basically lasted for no time. And let's see what time this is. And this is uh, late afternoon. I'm not even marked watching the markets at this point. So by the time I get back to watching the markets, we're over in here. So I'm, I didn't even bother to draw this in. I'm watching it. And again, I'm still in the, believe it or not, even though we're all the way up to 127 and I could, could have, should have, would have at one, bought at 124. In the back of my mind, I'm still thinking, you know, is there a pullback that has my name on it? But I don't want to buy at 126. Are you with me? Does anybody think I'm being inflexible yet? Or too patient? Or stubborn? Okay. I mean, if I'd sold, how would that have worked for me? Not so good, huh? So at, at least I picked the right side at the moment. But I'm not getting paid very well. My hardest emotional state to deal with right now is the shoulda, coulda, woulda emotion. Matt, um, 
I told you guys a couple weeks ago, uh, I told you the story about me g getting my emotions burned out on one trade. Um, and that really helps me a lot because this is just a, eh, it's okay. I don't really pine over it. Um, remember, as I make these trades, first of all, I mark them for myself, but I also know that I'm teaching you guys twice a week. So I also put dialogue on here because I want you to connect with what I'm thinking, okay? Um, I mean, I really want you to walk in my ear and crawl around my brain, and that's what this, these sessions are all about. So, you know, I want you to know that I'm thinking that and that you, you'll pro you would probably be thinking that, so you need to fight it and say, you know, this, this is not the trade I want. You know, this is not the droid you're looking for, so to speak. Now, you could have played this game if you wanted to. I don't know how you would have seen it. I mean, you might have just said anywhere in here with a stop underneath because this definitely took out, let's take a look. This is a swing. Now this is a new swing low, or swing high, rather. So you could have just been working a go-no-go -go like this, right? So if you're an active trader, and we've got a few people here that trade 60s relatively active, you could have decided that the shelf was down around 125 and a half now instead of 124. Bought it. I did not, but you could have bought in this area. Just had this resting here, looking for the first pullback. And if the first pullback was deep enough, that's your pendulum pullback. Does that make sense? And I'm using 40 pips. Take a look at the ATR. Does this make sense? Nobody's answered me. Okay, so first pullback, you can just have your stop waiting there. As this thing takes off, you can say, well, okay, it looks to me like this is the shelf. I'll put, you know, I'll risk 40 pips, and I'm going to put a third of it down here. And if it gets to my area, I'll get long and leave your order in. And here's your stop, and here's your pullback, and you might have gotten filled. Horizontal line trading. Hmm. I don't think it's the craziest thing, though, Carlos. I don't know that I'd do it. It's not my style. But if you if you're a a multi-day, you know, short-term swing trader, because l let's think about the exercise I just gave you. Isn't this the parabolic move now? So, in light of what the homework was, this isn't the craziest thing in the world. If you're just trading for this parabolic move, right? So that's why I want you to work on finding staging areas, then the parabolic move. Staging areas, the parabolic move. Just collect a bunch of them. It's a good method if you have tremendous intuition. Um, well, I do, want everybody, I do want everybody to work on their intuition. And one of the ways, I mean, this trade is not for everybody, but it's for some of you. Carlos says it's a good method if you have tremendous intuition to see where the buyers are. Gina says balance, imbalance. Okay, so some people will be able to see this and some people won't. Me, I I wasn't even nibbling at this point. At this point, I was just kind of scratching my head. Nothing wrong with taking this trade, but just kind of scratching my head. Now, of course, look at it take off again. So now it's blown through what I thought was a really important maximum excursion line. Were you looking at the spirals at all? Um, really not, Peter. I was, I guess the right right way for me to describe my state of mind at this point was I had been looking for an opportunity to buy a pullback for a longer, not a long, not a lot, not a portfolio trade, but a longer term trade for something like a couple weeks. So that's why I was looking at 60s. And it was down around 123 and a half, 124, and I didn't get long. So now it's up here. I'm really kind of only casually watching. I got a lot going on right now. This is, you know, coming. This is coming up to doctor's appointments, all this stuff. So I'm not forcing a trade at this point. What does this have to do with intuition? Surely it's either you like jumping on a moving trade that might keep moving or not. Well, Reese. Um, I'll, I'm going to squeeze in, not to squeeze in, but just so I can show more. Okay, so if you can get a sense for the run higher 
and then this is just a range right here do you see this and this is the shelf coming out of the range then you get an impulse higher and if you think the buyers have moved from down here because of this wide range bar to the bottom of this shelf and you want to risk one stop okay I'm okay with that I've certainly taken crazier trades than that this is a swing low because this took out the high you have to anticipate that there might be a pullback and you might get filled and you might not so maybe it works for you maybe it doesn't some people will trade this some people won't as I said me a lot of stuff going on the only way I'm going to trade is if I get you know we, we rate trades one two three four five right do you mean a pullback after a parabolic move or a pullback after an impulsive move um, this is exactly what I mean Carlos let me see if I can say it again okay here's our spike higher then we go let me diagram it out then we go into this okay then we go into this range which really stops right here and the shelf of this range let me put it back where it should be The shelf coming out of this range is this low right here. Okay. So we pull up. This is our pullback. When we take out this high right here, this becomes a swing low. And again, we're going to work on this to death on Wednesday and Thursday in September first pullback swing low okay now we get a run up so this is that next run up that makes a swing high and as we pull back if you want to try and buy against this shelf okay you can do that I don't know if the right word is impulse here that's the only reason why I'm not using the word first impulse in my answer Carlos I don't know if that's the right word I have to think about what we should call that because but this is the first pullback and then there's this next swing up questions on this or are we are we good is that the same structure um, no 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 I'm not looking for it if I was looking for it to fill the mountain I'd be buying down here I'm looking for higher highs and higher lows here right I think I understand your question Scotty but there's no mountain here right if I was if I was buying down here here's a mountain but there's no mountain here 3d 3d mountain well that's it okay you got me there David Dye says 3D mountain. This is a 3D mountain. Well, you, you can take me to the woodshed for that. It is a 3D mountain. But I'll, here, can I give you my answer, David? 3D mountain, 2D stop, though. How about that? So mull that over. Add that to the glossary. Okay. You know, like I said, this trade's not for everybody. I didn't even, I didn't even sniff at it. I'm not going to take a trade at this point because I have enough going on um, with my health and the other things that I'm doing. It's going to have to be a four or so, right? I'm going to have to really feel this trade at this moment. I'm casually interested in being long, but I'm not feeling these trades at all. I'm drawing, trying to stay connected, but I, I, you know, I'm, I'm in and out, so. All right, so now we break above my maximum excursion line with a bar that's got some gusto, and I'm now I'm kind of like, geez, we're at 127.70. Wanted to get long at 124. That idea is crap. But again, being short, that didn't work either. So got nothing going. Still making new highs. Look at it reach. 
Now we're 128. Do you ever feel like could have got long at 123.95? Now it's at 128. Crap. But I guess I better go take a look at that and see what I messed up, right? Matt Cube says that maximum excursion line looks like a center line. Well, funny you should mention that. <coughs> All right. So we're at 128. I got nothing going. We make a high, but we close significantly off the high. So let's see what happens to that high. We're testing your center line here, Matt. So far, so good. Um, I don't know why that showed up here, this down sloper. Oh, this must be reflected from something else. All right, so start to pull off. Leave a low. Close off the low. Right back up. Anybody notice the difference? Ah, Timmy says, that surprised me, the depth of the drop. Okay, so anybody else? Larger pullback, okay. Anything else? Got a different description? I've got, a, I've got an idea in mind, a description in mind. Not the crazy range stuff? Well, not the crazy part, but... Steeper pullback, what else, Aaron? Yeah, I got that. What else? How's, how's the car ride, Aaron? BC, maybe. Spiral expanding, more velocity. Swings are getting bigger. Okay, all good descriptions, but doesn't this look more two-way? Ah, Scotty says, I see a top and a shoulder. Okay. These look like harmonic coils going up, and now it's a change of behavior and took out a low. So... It may, maybe this is the first time we've taken out a low. How about that? Pat says we've taken out a low. Doesn't this look more two-way to you suddenly? It's the first thing I thought was, well, it got to 128. It looks a little bit two-way now. And that actually made me start to pay a little more attention because I was thinking, you know what, maybe I'll get a pullback that I can buy. Right? Two-way. Upside, it's, got, it's moving up and down. Right? It's got nice swings to the upside, nice swings to the downside now. Instead of just minor pullback, run up, minor pullback, run up. Yeah? Okay, so Scotty says, top, is that the top? All right. So let's see what it gives us. Runs back up. It does make a new high, but doesn't close above it. And that makes a higher high. So I move the shelf up to here. But we pull back. So I put in a new line of maximum excursion. See it? So... Here's our first pullback, and this is that next run up. Whatever we we need a word for that. If anybody else can think of something other than impulse, I don't know. I don't know. I'll have to, my word smithing is not very good this morning. But here's our top major pullback, new high. That makes this a swing low, right? Lots of separation on the bars from the top. Take a look at that. Pat says, look at the separation. Every time we get up here, look at the separation off the high. And what would that tell us? Yeah, Al, Al says, good eye, Pat. Price is slowing down. Might tell us that. Well, it tells us that somebody has an interest either to take profit or sell, right? There are some sellers here. We, we have maybe for the first time found some sellers. Maybe. Second chance slope equals words. Uh, maybe. Maybe, Peter. i got to think about this. There's got to be a word for this. But I'll think about it. It'll come to me. Maybe it'll come to me by the end of the session. All right. So top, top. 
All right, now we start to pull back, put in a new line of maximum excursion. Now, I took this line of maximum excursion that is from this high to this deep pullback and then this run up. See it? So this, it is a valley that sloped. You see it? I connected it and put in a mat line of maximum excursion. Then I dragged it down here and connected it to, to this low that it just made. This deep pullback. Let's, na let's name that deep pullback, like deep throat. Everything you draw should have a purpose. Once you start to get more than casual, everything you draw should have a purpose. Okay, So I copied the line to the bottom. See it? Yep, it's got exactly right. If you copy it below, you might be projecting a rolling chop. I might be. I'm not exactly sure what I'm projecting yet, Ouija, but I do this. I measure the width. Okay? Remember, I, at the, I have to tell you the truth. At the moment, even though I actually am seeing two-way behavior, and I've now marked two and one, I still have in the back of my mind that I might be looking for a pullback, right? So even though it looks like we have found some sellers, at the moment at least, I'm still thinking maybe there's a sell-off coming here that I can, you know, I can get my hands on, okay? How many people think I'm being patient? How many people think I'm being stubborn? Matt says stubborn. Anybody else? Thank you for being honest. Patient. Very patient. Wondering about stubborn. Okay. Thank you. I think you should consider a short, says Al. Would you look at a sell, says Reese. You're always like that. You only trade when the light comes on, says Ouija. Thank you. I appreciate the comment. All positions are long. Well, it hasn't paid yet to be short, does it? Has it? Well, I take that back. You could have made money here, but I don't know how the hell you would have known to sell here. But this is the first major swing to the downside. I think you're trading a bit more to the left than you might normally trade. Well, I'm not trading, but... You mean thinking to the left? Yeah, okay. Scotty says, you know, you're a little caught up in what's going on over here. Okay. So maybe I'm not to the right. So let's see what happens to me. So I measure this deep pullback to its first run up. Now, why would I do that? Guess I can't change this one. Um, I double the range. Exactly right. How many times? Geez, just think of the last three sessions. How many times have we seen double the range work? Right? David says draw the median line. I'm going to stick with what I what I did, David. But this is 60 minute Canada. You could definitely go back and draw it in yourself. Okay. So I doubled the range and just just threw it out there just just to know where it was in case it means anything right now it means nothing right so in a certain sense Scotty I am looking to the right because I'm wondering I don't know if I've changed horses yet but I am drawing to the right, so to speak. I am drawing a leading indicator, right? Does that make sense? Everybody? Al says he's now based on that current price action looking for a sell around the maximum excursion line. Okay. All right. Let's, let's see whether I'm patient, stubborn, or whether a light goes on. So, 
Al, take a look at what I'm drawing and see if you think can can figure out what I'm thinking. Interesting, you should use the max, upsloping maximum squeeze line for double the range and not a close of the downsloper that gave you that number of touches on the top. Um, okay, uh, and not a close of the downsloper gave you the top. Hmm. Don't see why I would use that, but okay. Um, Ouija says, you must be really locked in because double the range is really drawing far to the right as this spiral is rather early in its birth. Did you, listen, did you hear what Ouija just said? You must be really locked in because double the range is really drawing far to the right. Because this spiral is, has it even formed yet? Thoughts? I think that's a really insightful comment, Ouija. Thoughts? What's just happened? From from here to here. From here to here, what's just happened? I mean with me. Uh, I'm definitely in diamond focus. Tim says, I've committed to an idea. Can anybody elaborate? Shift to short versus long, says Todd. Hi, Todd. Went from watching price to making a logical leap, says Matt Cubed. It seems like your top LME is like the top line of a median line parallel, and you're looking to take a trade off the bottom line, action line. Well, I am trying to measure that bottom line, and it Aaron, if it gets down there, I'm probably interested, right? Carlos says I'm stuck on a long. Robbie says, did the light bulb come on? I'm asking you, what do you think? You've seen the precursor of a potential opportunity, says Reese. Okay, I think your logic is starting to come together, says Al. I am actually with Al. Al might have been a step or two ahead of me. I, you have a target and an idea on what you're going to do, says BJ. I think your light bulb came on. Okay. One, two, three, and I'm seeing horizontal action. A deep pullback followed by a horizontal action. As I got to around here, this is this is it right here. Watch. Top. Yeah, I know we made a slightly higher high, but we're rangy now, and we've just had a deep pullback. This is much more two-sided, and I'm starting to see what looks like horizontal action. And if this thing tips over, you've heard me say this about six times already, has it paid to be short yet? So what are the positions? I wish I was long, but I'm not, and everybody else is either long or flat, right? Anybody that went short got shot at any place. Now, that doesn't mean it's not the right position to be long, but if this thing tips over, everybody is long, right? And right in here, I start to get the idea that, hey, we're starting to get horizontal. Scotty says, I think you're about to take a short. So Al has been locked in since I drew the maximum skirt line, and somewhere in here I'm starting to think with Al, we're eating at the bottom of this range, and I see, you know what, I maybe this is two, maybe this is three, one's over here. It's not the craziest idea I've ever had. Okay, so Peter says, what about the close on the last bar? I don't like it. Okay. Still within the range, though, dude. I get it, but look at this close right here. Look at this close right here. I'm not going to live or die on one bar. What I Again, let me tell you what I like about this area. We've just gone higher and higher and higher, and suddenly we start to have two-way action, and this is a hell of a pullback. Okay, This is a 200-pip pullback. We did get back to new highs, but now we're going horizontal. Okay? Okay? 
and I'm uh, we you're right I'm thinking very very far to the right and I'm thinking that this spiral that was moving up really ended fell apart here it, it got to the point where it's no it's gravity has broken it apart yeah I like the close so many times it gives a strong push up right before it falls off says Pat remember we trade fluctuations, right? So I need a rally to get short. Isn't that true? Because I'm not going to sell here. I want it to come to me. So I'll close. It doesn't bother me. Now, I might get stopped out, Peter, but it doesn't bother me. If I decide that I think we've gone horizontal and we're going to tip, and if we do, everybody's long, and the opportunity is here or lower, I'm willing to risk 40 pips for even here. Okay? All right, so let's look. Now, Peter, when you see this close, how do you feel? Yeah, the longs will, if it tips over, the longs will push well. So Matt Cube says, I like that bar. Aaron says, a short seems worth a try if the opportunity presents itself. Yeah, I need the opportunity now, right? Pete, how do you like this bar? Nicholas, do you have questions? I want to draw you in, buddy. I want you to get involved. Are you following along? Okay. And, you know, for those of you that are relatively new, the people that have been here a long time can tell you, I want you to ask questions. I'm slowly taking things in. I get it. So when you have questions, ask because... Or if, even if you have a comment that you disagree, ask or tell me because if you're thinking that, believe me, 10 or 12 other people are thinking the same thing. So don't worry. But if you're still just soaking it up, that's fine too. Okay, so now take a look. This is what I write literally to myself but also for you guys. And I'll tell you what the graybeard said after I wrote this. So price breaks below multiple swing lows. Can you see it? See the two ledges and then they're broken? And we close on our low. Did I miss a sale? What do you think the graybeard said? I mean, these poor guys that are left that are not on vacation, <laughs> they're watching me watch a market, not trade, right? And they said, boy, you're slow on the trigger, aren't you, boss? Wouldn't buy it at 124. Yeah, they just said, did you just miss another one? Yeah, exactly. Perry, that's the, what they said. Boss, are you hearing us? Because they're saying sell, 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 sell. What are you doing? Hello? Would it be suicide for a whale to try and push up for a sale? Oh, Peter, I, I often buy to sell. Often. Okay, I know, I know you guys haven't been here. You and Nick, Nicholas haven't been here for me detailing uh, a whale trade but yeah this is a perfect area to try and this is a perfect area to try and manipulate the market but just for a bit right but the, here there's the problem Peter what would be the problem right here if I try and push it up everybody's long how am I going to get people to buy right oh Nick says he doesn't matter okay so we call him Nick or Nicholas see the, the problem is I can manipulate people and get them to buy, except the market's all long. So it's a kind of difficult. So this one, I don't, I'm not pushing. I can, but I'm not. So I do feel, did I miss a sale? And I'm getting raspberries from the peanut gallery, the graybeards. But take a look. Close on our high. So I got a little bit of hope. That bar that Peter didn't like was the last photon, says Al. Al says this was the last opportunity. Peter says, will price fluctuate? Well, I have to rely on that, don't I, Pete? I need price to come back, come back to Papa, so to speak. Because I ain't selling down here. I'll miss it first. Pastor Tim would say, in a situation like this, put your order in the market. Everybody paying attention to Matt Cube? 
put your order in the market. Ouija says, do you feel this mirror bars and the breaking the shelf is the fulcrum and mass shifting because I can't see the mass shift earlier. I think this is the this is the market getting its back broken right here. Yep. So I immediately said, did I miss a sale? Then when I saw this next one, Ouija's talking about these two bars. Maybe this is the mass shifting. I'll tell you what I thought, Ouija. I thought, you know what? This is the market getting its back broken. And if we roll back up, we're going to have a lot of people that sat through this pullback very eager to take their profits. So we might run up, but I think I'll have company. So how far will it go? I don't think it will go too far. So we'll see. Okay, I'm a little eager. How about you guys? I think I've seen three. So this is another point that I made uh, not only yesterday, but on Tuesday to somebody else I'm mentoring. It's Carlos is, you know, I think it was the second or third session Carlos ever attended. Carlos said, trade within your stop. If you got 40 pips to use, don't be afraid to use them, right? So you don't have to trade. Perry says, put me in short just below the line. So Perry wants to trade right in here. Take a look. You got this close and this close. So these are the highest close. See them? I know this is the highest high. This is These are the highest closes. See it? Put me short at the maximum excursion with a stop above the high. Well, if I put you in at the maximum excursion, of course, you're selling above the high, right? Matt cubed? Unless I misunderstand what you're saying. So take a look. This close, this close. These are the highest closes, same prices. So that's where Perry's looking. So I think this is where the market gets its back broken, right here. Matt Cube says, sell at the maximum excursion, and what does the stop buy me? Well, it buys you 40 pips of protection, but you are you don't have a stop, so to speak, right? <coughs> if you sell here, you can put your stop above this swing high. Sell at the last pair of mirror bars, Yu King says, which is what Perry's saying, put your stop above two. Perry says, I'm, I'm trying to listen to the Greybeard's karma. No stop might miss the train down. Hmm. Hi, Sharon. The stop above the mirror bars. Yeah, n well, no, not the stop above. I want to sell the mirror bars right here with the stop above the high, which is two. Uh, I like to sell the downsloping maximum excursion line test retest. Um, here, okay, that's another idea, but let me. It's the wrong color, but let's play with this. Okay, you can do that for a while. You can do that, and your stop above two, sure. Sell on the downsloper above two. Okay, you could do that. All right, so that's somebody's idea. We'll put that here. Okay. All right, Al says it's exactly right. Now Perry is talking about right. It's talking about right here. All right. So those are the two ideas. Okay. And we're looking at this close and this close, and these are the highest closes. All right. Those are the two ideas out there. So now let me ask you a question. Was I stubborn or patient about getting long? Okay, I do get it. I got a stubborn from Reese. Okay. Reese, do you think... Okay, so John says you're patient and now you're open-minded now. How about this, Reese? Do you think I was stubborn but... Oh, Reese says because there was a trade there. Okay. All right. So now I got a question for you. Do you think I, at least I'm out of the stubborn mode now? I'm too. I'm open-sided now. Reese says this is just not my style. 
Um, I didn't feel connected, Reese, which is why I didn't take any of those trades. And maybe it was it had to do with all the things that were going on. I'm I'm fighting with three doctors at this point, so um, it may it may have taken me quite a quite a bit of time to get connected to the market, and it al it seems almost style like says Thomas. Okay, so and that's a message to all of you. If you don't feel well, you shouldn't be trading, or you you know you're waiting for callbacks from the doctors, that kind of stuff. Be very careful about jumping in. Um, now I've got a lot of training wheels around me. I've got first of all I got the graybeards to watch my orders. Um, I also don't ever have to trade if I don't want to. And I don't ever feel the urge to trade. That's been cut out of me. And I know you guys, unfortunately, um, that's not the case with you. You have an urge as you, you have a work ethic, so to speak. If you watch the market for X amount of time, you expect to trade. So, not me. I feel that this is where the market's back got broken right here. Ouija, you like that? You don't like that? So the mirror bars and then the break in the mirror bars, it just, to me, it just seems like I could hear the market crack at that point. And the light came on. Okay. Perry, here's my order right here. Take a look. See it? Look familiar? Same area you're looking at, right? Stop above two. My only question is, I've got my orders in the market. Did I miss the sale at, it was this three, did I miss the sale? If I did, it's an opportunity loss and I'll move on. Why do you think it's going to, oh, well, see, there's the big question, Matt. Why do you think it's going to make it back up to the mirror bars? Well, here's the thing, Matt. If it makes it up to the mirror bars, I'm willing to sell. If it doesn't make it up to the mirror bars, I'm not willing to trade. That's the difference in what how you're thinking and how I'm thinking. I don't really care. I mean, I mean, I, it's the wrong word. I'm not debating with myself whether or not it'll get up there because I'm not willing to sell here or here. There's only one place that I'm willing to sell, and it's right here. Now, if you want to sell here, that's fine. I'm expecting that there'll be sellers at this top, right? So I don't want to stretch and try and sell at this top because... Okay, take care, Gina. I don't want to sell at this top because, the, you know, I, don't, I, I need all the protection I can get, but... If the sellers are at this top, it may not make it to the top. So instead, I'd rather sell at the highest close, which is below this top. See it? Because I want to get in if it gets up there. But I don't want to get this aggressive because th you can see how wonky this market is. I want to leave some money in my pocket to hide behind the fronts, right? That's just my choice. But I'm not going to squeeze by being either at this up upsloping line or at the high high I'm gonna be inside of it I'm just not gonna be that far inside you know you could be here there's nothing wrong with that you with me looks like you have the largest stop reasonably possible I think so Aaron that, and I but I wanted to still be inside the high so to speak okay and of course now it turns really orderly really orderly now for those of you that are trading against the slope line you're still good really orderly am I being patient or am I being stubborn my order still up here I'm not changing my order if you wanted to trade for those of you that want to trade against the slope line you just got filled and there's your stop right there okay so I'm going to Do this for you, and I'm going to color it. Um, uh, blood red. So it looks different. Okay, there we go. I think you're being disciplined rather than patient or stubborn. Okay, does that give us our noise above? Um, yeah, uh, yeah. 
it's let's measure it 24 it gives you eight eight pips Matt I remember the price action should not comment anymore okay you king and there's as I said there's three or four people that stock this trade some of you got it you're following the math that's disciplined okay at this point one doesn't know whether they're patient or stubborn okay so I'm just gonna sit up here though maybe you moved down on this slope line or maybe you gave up I don't know but I'm putting somebody in at the slope line with a stop here okay with me every decision has consequences right it seems to me you using three quarters of your go-no-go -go for protection which is a bit unusual and the reason why Ouija is because this is the high okay and I've got I'm in a quandary Ouija which is and, and somebody asked this earlier why would this pull back up because everybody's long so if it does pull back up I'm a little concerned what the bar will look like so I want to I'm only willing to sell near the top and I want as much protection as possible and it's because I don't know why it will pull back up but I need I, I need protection that's how I feel I need 12 ticks of noise and would take what that gives me for an entry says Matt cubed okay I'm cater exactly right we just we just says you're catering for a last photon that's exactly right the only thing that's going to help me is that last photon otherwise I've missed it right and that last photon can be long could someone nudge it up to get short yeah well we already talked about that they could I'm gonna tell you right now I'm gonna admit that I did not but here's the problem if everybody's long how do you force people to get long longer if they're long they're not feeling any heat at all are they Does it, is it I mean they might they might sell up here so as a whale if I if I get up here I might get to here and find that you know I'm buying and buying and buying which I don't want to buy I want to be short right this only works if you're able to force people to get take your position and also get you short when you so I I, I'm gonna get long and long stop buying and then everybody else has to buy and they have to buy enough that by the time we get to here I'm short follow me but if everybody's the most of the market is already long it's hard to get up here and not end up still being long follow me this is an unusual market everybody's long and it makes sense except if it drops it won't make sense but it hasn't dropped yet as as we said I'm thinking over here I know we're trading here but I'm thinking over here this is only gonna work over here so for me to push it up it would be very difficult because who the hell is gonna buy from me yet if an unexpected buyer comes into the market I got a surprise for them if it gets up here right but I can't push them to buy in the four days you could walk around and look at the wood for sale and know it's over that's that is true absolutely Peter but I'm tape reading and so basically I'm hinging in on two on two things one I've either missed the sale or two if there's the last photon I'll sell here and only here make sense And and I may miss the I may miss the trade, but that's okay. Again, patience versus stubborn. We'll see. So again, it's doing nothing. So I measure. This is actually the same frequency, but I'm just taking a look at a pullback. Is there anything that's making you think last photo? You're just protecting yourself. It's not that I'm protecting myself against the possibility the only way I'll I can get short at this point is if there is a last photon Matt because I'm unwilling to sell here I have no protection at that point right 
a last photon might run up here, I need protection. You guys with me? It's the only way I can get filled, but I know it'll also be a dangerous fill. could be messy. What's nice, too, is there's a world of folks from the other world of thought and books and newsletters and expos who are buying because it's a bull flag and they're about to get gored, says Timmy. Okay, yeah. What does that expression mean, the last photon? Oh, okay. So we're getting a run up. Now we go horizontal. A lot of times when we go horizontal, Robbie, just when you think it's horizontal, we'll get one last but blow off. Or we, the last photon is comes from a Star Trek movie. It always seems like he's got the bad guy where he wants him, but he's only got one last photon torpedo to go. So it's like the market is horizontal, but it's it's last push. Um, and why in this interest would you not think that breaking the maximum excursion line suggests that price could go to new highs? I'm actually not thinking that it will break the maximum excursion line. Unless, unless you mean this one, Reese. You mean the downsloper? I'm viewing this, okay, you're viewing this as a down sloper. I'm viewing this as, okay, we're in two different worlds here, buddy. I'm viewing this as this. Horizontal. See it? And I'm not viewing this as this is the, to the top's in, okay? If the top's in, I'm dead. I'll give you that. But I think it more likely, well, no. I know that if the top is in, if this is three, I'm dead. But if it does make a last photon, I'm willing to risk 40 pips. How about that? I think the last photon also comes from a star or a planet's final energy. That's right. We talked about that. From a star or planet's final burst of energy that creates the ring. That's exactly right. So it is in nature. You are absolutely right, Scotty. So it collapses and then it explodes out. So pre-Tim, I would have a stop entrance at number one, 127.34. Oh, you would have sold the low? Yeah. But see, okay, so Peter, and, and Scotty says he learned about that last burst of energy that creates the ring from Breakfast of the Master here. That's right, Scotty. We haven't talked about that in a while. So we'll have to do some physics. So Peter... When you're going to sell the, 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 new, the new low here, pre-coming to here, you with me? If I, hang on, I'm not, I'm not scolding you. Okay, if I manage to get filled, guys that sell this low push my position away from my stop, right? I'm relying on that if I get filled. I'm relying on the breakout sellers right it helps me god bless you notice price is skidding into the 3d upsloper lower maximum excursion line so if there's going to be a pop it should be coming up so al says hey take a look we got this coming on and we got this coming on this can't happen forever so al's in tune here okay good al was al shifted before i did so we're still, look at us go sideways. And again, patience or stubborn. Right now, nothing's going on, so I don't think it's st stubborn. I'm unwilling to sell this lower level because I can't buy any protection anymore. Now let's take a look now. Now if, I'm, if I didn't get filled there, now I can't even afford the top anymore. So that idea is dead. I pull my order, don't like the lack of directions as Matt kid. All right, so Matt, you don't want to get short uh, with Perry and me? Lack of direction, says so Matt Cube. Okay? Okay. So Matt says you're being stubborn, right? Give it up. Right? Okay. That's what Matt says give it up. Any other thoughts before we go? Then we'll go. We'll move on. <coughs> oh, okay. Could be getting tired, says Perry. Okay? Now remember, you don't have to, these are 60 minute bars, you don't have to watch the screen 
for 60 minutes and you certainly don't even have to watch every bar. I'm looking for a 3D wash and rinse, says Carlos. Me too. Could we get it over with? Hopeful. Still got my orders in. I like that bar. Still got my orders in. Graybeards at this point are saying, you're never going to get it, boss. Give it up. Sell now or forever hold your peace. And I kind of feel that way now. I'm looking at, here it goes, tailing off again, right? Now I got my orders in the market, but it's just kind of tailing off again. Actually, I'm asleep at this point. It's, mid it's midnight. I'm out cold. I get up around 3, guys. 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock. I'm awake. Um, now I'm taking Hobbs out for his morning pee and walk, then making tea. So that's added an extra 15 minutes into the routine. So I don't get into the room until about 3.20 now, 3.30. Still got my orders in. Okay, so now it's 4 o'clock. I walk in and I see this, and I'm like, so close yet so far, right? Now, how many of you would actually, at this point, if you got up now and saw it here, might actually do this? And just say, hell, that's close enough. I'll just cheat. Abdu says I would. Close enough for me. It is Geneva Shag time, boys and girls, which is my favorite time. So I've got a lot of people that says I'd be tempted or I'd do it, right? And, you know, sometimes that works and sometimes it doesn't. I mean, stick to the plans, says Carlos. Well, sure, but I may uh, battle out of the trade completely. Sharon says stick to the plan. Well, the one thing I do do religiously is I always stick to my plan. I will abandon the trade if it means changing the plan. I just won't do it. So, you know, so close yet so far. And, oops. That's because you're Yoda. There you go, Peter. Thanks. Greed will blow you up, says Carlos. Okay, I'm filled. Perry is filled. Al is filled. Carlos is filled. The question is, now, I, like, I love the clothes. How about you? Now, the people that were selling here, Still alive, right? Now to the middle game, game, says Carlos. Okay, so let's stop for a second and think about the middle game. You can see I doubled the range and added in the maximum excursion line to the downside. And I also have the middle, right? Good. Great example of patience. Well, we'll see if it pays off. Now, we're risking 40. If we get to the me median line, let's take a look. Um, well, I've got to measure it better. 128.15, 126.60. Somebody do the math for me. 128.50, 126.60. So that's... 15 plus 34 is 51, 151. Does that make sense? So it's, we're ri risking 40 to make 151. So that works, it's 3 to 1. And of course this one would be 6 to 1, right? Maybe more. Three point seven to one says Al. Thank you. Okay, so now, oh, I need bars. Is what I need. Thank you. Okay, so we're filled. Where's our first problem? We're in the middle game now. Where's our first problem? That's if we don't get stopped out. Where's our first problem? This is the middle game, not the end game. 
We talked about the end game. Low pivot at one. Okay, so in, you, did you notice when this happened, when we left a higher high, a higher low, see it? I immediately went, okay, if this is the higher low, I might be in trouble because it might be one, two, three. Then I need to find out which one breaks, right? So 127.45. All right, somebody thinks this is the first problem. Somebody thinks this is the first problem. Is there a first problem now at two? Well, I'm asking you guys. What do you think, Robbie? You, we just worked this over to death yesterday. What do you think, Robbie? Robbie says, I think there's a problem right here. Yes, because it's horizontal, says Peter. Okay, so we've got to get out of horizontal or we're in trouble. Isn't that true? Some, well, here's Al says, I think the longs are going to catch on and sell. Well, that has to happen or we're screwed, right? I don't know what's going to make them get out, but the longs see a higher low and take it out. I don't know what that means. Re explain it again, John. So we have a problem here. Let's take a look. Does, is there anything we can do? It's not even two to one. So I can't go to break even here. So really, I'm going to have to gut it out until we get to this area. But when we get to this area, I probably can go to break even. Or you should probably go to break even, right? i got to hold my water, says L. So for this to work, two things had to happen. We had to have a last photon and... We're going to have to break out of the range and start some... This has to actually be a horizontal, and we have to break out to the downside. Does that make sense? So let's go all the way back to where Ouija said that I was actually thinking far to the right. That's all the way over here. And I asked, and Ouija said, I think because you're adding in this, you're thinking a whole new spiral that hasn't even happened yet. Remember his, remember his comment? Ouija, am I, in a, am I a being inaccurate? Will you always stick to your first frequency as a rule of thumb for last for LME whilst the mirror bars could have given you another, in this case, a higher one? The key to this particular li line of maximum excursion was this huge pullback. This is the first big pullback of the entire move up and then that next high. So for me, let me see if I can draw it. Watch now. This, you know, we, we talk about A, B, C, and I know I didn't do a median line, however, These are the three pivots, so to speak. Yeah, thank you very little. These are the three pivots. This is a A, a B, and a C. And and they're going to give... Oh, I give up. You're just going to have to imagine this one. They're going to give me a mathematical relationship. Lewis. Now... I didn't draw this in, but I could. I'm going to draw it in and I'm going to take it out because I really just want to work with what I have in front of me. So look at the modified shift and the line of maximum excursion. That's why this is the important line of maximum excursion. It's this A, this B, and this C because on the entire way up, this is the key to turning from looking to get long to looking for a short. Does that make sense, Lewis? And this, these mathematics are going to work for us. Or not. I mean, they're, they're going to play out the trade. Okay. 
sorry, I'm going to dump the median line because this is really not a median line trade per se, but it's these three pivots that are going to give us the probable path to price if we get the last photon and, of course, then find sellers. But right now we haven't found sellers, so let's move back ahead. All this time goes long. Let's take a look. We put our order in here. So this is 10 o'clock on the 16th. And we get filled at 5 o'clock on the 18th. It's a long time, huh? And because it's a long time, doesn't that make you feel horizontal? Or certainly at least a range, right? Do you feel the tension of the order in the market all the time? Do you mean, do I think about the order, Matt? Like, is it going to get filled? Am I filled? Like that, is that what you mean? <coughs> so for the two days, does it create a tension for you? No, I don't, I don't even think about it, Matt. I, in the you know, 25 years ago, yes. But that's all gotten burnt. That's why I don't impulse trade anymore. That's why I don't have joy or pain when things play out anymore. It's all gotten burned out of me now. The order's in, it's automatic. The plan. Once I've wrote, written the plan, remember, here's how I go through it. Nick, Peter, you might not have heard this. This is a great thing to take up. Okay, when you commit to a trade, you write out your trading plan longhand. Okay, then I actually write a check for the stop, and I assume that I've lost that money. So in this case, per hundred thousand dollars, I'm assuming that I lose four hundred dollars per hundred thousand dollars. Okay, and I trade. The equivalent of about a thousand lots here okay so I write a check for it literally a physical check I actually write it in the air but I have some guys that used to be in my prop room they actually had fit you know checks with their name with their name of their company printed on them and then they would just write them out and then just attach them to the trading plan and that physical action of writing the check makes me then just discount I don't have to I don't worry about it anymore and so Matt the the truth is once I write the trading plan and write the check, it's over. I don't, it's Now it's just execution time. It gets executed or it doesn't. And if it gets executed, I just follow the plan. So there's no tension left. That's why I want you guys to get in the habit of writing a plan. If the check works for you, fine. If it doesn't, that's fine too. But that's why there's no tension. Okay? It's just, at this point, it's mechanical. Is there a point where you pull your order? Sure. There should be a point... And that's what I'm asking you guys, patient or stubborn. Is there a point where you should say, okay, never mind, I'm out of here? Well, for me, maybe I was, maybe stubborn is the wrong word. Maybe I was lackadaisical about the way up. Okay, I wasn't aggressive enough or I wasn't in tune. But there was a point, even though I want to get long, and by the way, that's still on my mind at this point, where I went, you know what? This is starting to look like a sell. So I better pay attention because this is a when this happened, this is a potential. When this happened, this is a potential sell coming up here maybe. So my mind shifted at this point, Matt. So in a certain sense, I'm pulling my orders right, even though I didn't have orders in. But I've gone from I want to be a buyer and I can't see a short side to all of a sudden, you know what? Maybe this is, maybe I should be starting to think about a sell. Same thing over here, If it might get to the point, first of all, if you were trading against this down sloping line, it definitely, if you didn't take this short, it definitely gets to the point where you can't afford it anymore and you should pull your orders, right? So the market will tell you when it's time to give, you know, enough. The other thing is, if it's been, now for me, it's not, it's not a big deal for it to be a day and a half to get filled, but you know, if you have lost focus, then you should pull your orders. Would, could you rate this opportunity for us out of five? How well could we see this? How well could you see this? I don't know. Shit, Al saw this before I did, Ouija. Now, I don't know about double the range. Maybe you couldn't see that. But I think, I think a lot of people 
could see it start to go sideways at this point, don't you think? Or do you think I'm, do you think not? What do you think? What do you think, Ouija? Do you think could you see it start to go sideways? I think this is maybe a three. I don't think it's a two. Aaron says I was I was itching to go short. Okay, so there you go. Bit rangy. Okay, I'll give you that. Now, whether or not you could project the spiral, that may be asking a lot. But remember, if it goes horizontal and everybody's long, and everybody's long from 123 and change all the way up to 128 and change, they're long with impunity, meaning, you know what, I got so much money in this, you can't hurt me. Remember how everybody was long gold? When I cornered the gold market, everybody was long gold, and they said, you know what, not only am I long, but I'll get longer if it goes down. And I mean, we had some, we have some people that are no longer here, by the way, because they were long with impunity, and they wouldn't listen to reason. We, I had some private sessions with some guys, free, a couple guys and a girl, because they, they had all their money in gold. They were convinced it was going to 5000 and they couldn't see the other side. And, and I said, you know, do you have an exit strategy? Yeah, it's going to 5000 No, do you have an exit strategy? Yeah, it's going to 5000 No, 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 no. What if it breaks 1500 if it gets to 1500 I'm going to buy more. It's like, do you have an exit strategy? Well, I bought at 600 and I bought more at 900 and I bought more at 1500 and it's been up to 1900 If it gets back to 1500 I'm going to buy some more. It's like, so it sounds like some of the doctors I speak to, says Lewis, or says Peter, they don't trade either. Yeah, so they don't, actually, and they don't listen either. So, it's the same thing here. These get, a lot of these people that are long, not only can they not see the downside, they're not even afraid of the downside. They're not even worried about it. They have so much money in this, they don't give a shit. They're, they're only thinking about how rich they're going to get. Have you ever been that way? Have you ever been in that position, anybody? Man, I got this so nailed. 132, here it comes, or... I'm afraid so, so many times. It's the beauty of your training. It's changed my stuck thinking, both trading and in life. Good, Matt Cube. I appreciate that. So there's people that are sitting here. Yes, right before blowing up, says Sharon. Don't say that. So there are people that are sitting here with tons of money on in their account, and instead of thinking about taking their profits, they're, they're immune. They can't be hurt. You can't hurt me. I got this. That's, that's what I really have going for me if this works. So let's see what happens. Looking for, they're looking for home runs. This is right, exactly right, Carlos. I'm looking for horizontal and then a new spiral, if you want to know what I'm thinking. Horizontal, then a new spiral. And Ouija's exactly right. When I see the market's back at broken right here, it's still rangy. I'm hoping for a last photon, and then I'm looking for a new spiral. And if the new spiral comes, where's its likely landing points? But first, I got to get filled, which seems to take forever. But that's okay. That's what the gray beards are for. All right, so I'm filled. Now the question is: We've talked about the first problem. If I were you, if we got down to here, I'd be going to break even. Okay. I maybe even here, but for me that would be a little early. I'll probably take these. And don't forget the Fed stuff going on doesn't help. Well, Peter, I don't really pay that much attention to that stuff, but you guys should because you have, unless you have a, you know, I consider a small account anything under a couple million dollars. So because most people trade leveraged, okay? So I'm not paying much attention to Fed, no Fed, I don't really care. And often that's a great opportunity. But as I told somebody in mentoring yesterday, they got caught on the British budget coming out. Okay, they had, I don't know, let's say 30 pips of profit in there, maybe less. They, were, they had a little less than their go-no-go, go, go, no go. let's say 10 pips of profit. And the British budget was coming out, okay? Well, if you have a small account or you're still learning to be consistently profitable and you know the budget's coming out or you know the Fed's meeting and you've only got 10 pips of profit in it or you've got an order to sell or buy, you probably should buy, you probably should just dump your position, wait for the market to settle down, then reassess the situation. If you're not in, and the Fed announcement is about to come out, you probably should pull your order. Because 
the volatility of it will probably kill you, right? Even if you're right. Make sense? Now, it may be the opportunity, the other side of that thing is, that may be the opportunity that turns everybody from being long into running for the exits, right? Depending on what happens. So, everybody everybody has to decide how they're going to trade. I don't actually worry about news, but remember, we're we have different account sizes and experience. So the reactions to the reactions to the reactions usually stop you out on Fed Day. That's that's exactly right, Carlos. Jorge says, I used to trade the Fed meetings, now I go to the gym. There you go. I used to trade the money supply announcement on Thursday afternoons, and I used to make more money doing that than any other time every week, Jorge, but that doesn't work anymore. So, yeah, you need to adjust to how those situations work for you all right so we get filled let's look at this bar let's get back on point here so we like to close right we've talked about the middle game middle game here we're, we're managing we're talking about how we're going to manage this okay now let me move move those over and change them to a different color At this point, we're filled. This bar closes on its low. Okay? Can we get stopped out? Only one person? Oh, I got two answers. That's it? Come on. Pay attention, guys. Can we get stopped out at this point? Are we within range of getting stopped out? Sure. So, A, when you're filled, did you check to make sure that your stop is live? I know we're talking about the middle game, but did you, did you double check and make sure? You know, did I get executed, and is my stop in the market, and is it for the same amount that I got executed for, right? Hi, Jeff, how are you? How you doing? See, so here's, just a hi to Jeff. Nick and uh, Nick and Pete. Jeff was a new guy a while ago. Now he's an old old hand on deck. Okay, so Nick, you'll fall into you'll fall into the rhythm. It it doesn't take that long. Okay, so it doesn't mean we're out of the woods just because we got one close that looks good. This does look like the last photon, no doubt about it. And maybe this is it. And you can see what I wrote. All right, dig it. I think I got three in. See it? One, two, three. I've got one, two, and I'm hoping that three is not going to form and send me up through three. Instead, I'm hoping that I'm going to get one, two, and it's going to blow through without forming a three, right? So a failed count, if you will. All right, so, okay, we're making more downside movement. That's good. Look, what the... Where did that come from? Now, you see it? This is why I was worried about what the last photon looks like. It's actually a new high. And for those of you that were selling against this line, you just got stopped out. If you're selling against a maximum excursion line, okay, you just got stopped out. Eek. And I can't remember the other entry, but the other entry also just got stopped out. And it really sucks because you only got stopped out by three ticks. Which is why I was unwilling to sell anywhere other than, you know, give me as much position potential as possible. So do you see how fraught it can be? It, uh, there's nothing wrong with this entry. Uh, this just goes picking this as a range rather than a final top was the key. You are exactly right, Reese. Picking this as a range and then using the protection above the range. I wanted all my 
I wanted to sell close to the top of the range and I wanted all my protection stuck up there. So if that seemed unusual, now you understand the reasoning because I don't know, and I don't know that this is not, that this is the top yet, we'll find out, but I thought, okay, great, I'm filled and it's the top, looks great. And then, no oh, crap. Highest close in the move so far. And again, if you'd sold the down sloping line or somebody else had another area over here, you're out. So the only thing that would have worked would be selling right where Perry and I sold at these closes. And this close isn't that far off, but it's got a bit of excursion past it. So let's see how that plays out. And look at the wide range of the bar. So I had 12 ticks above the top for noise, says Matt Cube. Okay. Um, so that's 128.24. Dude, <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know if you, you made it or you, it depends on your cash broker. How about that? As above, so below on the maximum excursion line, possible spiral around the maximum excursion line. Yes, absolutely. Very nice pick. Any extra reasons apart from thinking that 1.45... Uh, is where we're going for why you saw this as a range top rather than more of a final top. I just actually went from Reese. I went from thinking I'm going to buy to I'm going to squeeze in just because I don't want to lose my place. When I saw this right here, Reese, this this looked like nothing else I'd seen since 123 and change. And and then as we start at the moment we started to go sideways, I thought. The whole character of this market has changed, and everybody's long. And not only are they long, they're long thinking, you know what, you can't hurt me. Because this didn't cause a panic. This caused fresh buyers. Right? Now, I don't know what this is. Maybe this is the 8 o'clock. Is this the Fed number? I don't know what this is. It doesn't matter. Don't know, don't care. Got my order in. I like that bar. Now, am I watching? Do you? I got a question for you. Do you think I'm actually watching this bar by bar? I'm actually on the at this point. I'm actually in. I'm at CrossFit right now. I mean, the gray. It's just like having your order in on your electronic pad. The graybeards are watching this, but they're not going to call me at at CrossFit and say, "Hey, you just made a new high." I'm I'm doing something else, man. Tailing off. Okay, so now. Look, take a look at where we are. We got a line of maximum excursion. We got this line of maximum excursion right here. As we pull down to it, my question is, are we going to stick here and head higher, which would be one, two, three, and then retest this three and take out this three, or are we going to blow through the potential three area? So that's how I'm using these as these aren't support and resistance. I'm just using them as signposts, right? It just helps me with the logic. Do you understand? It helps me keep track of where the fight is. All right. If three's forming, this better be it on the downside, right? Form now or forever hold your peace. We're at the two level. I know we closed above it. Tested two. We need to break out of this range or we're going to be stuck in a range and then I got a whole nother, whole nother worry. We'll see if three forms here. This is kind of the nexus. Not that I would trade here, but this is really the, you know, we're at the answer area to our puzzle. Now, remember, Peter said in the old days, if we broke this line, he'd be a breakout seller, right? It's something like 50, I'm going to quote this off the top of my head. It's something like 56% of retail traders are breakout buyers or sellers. Just so you know. So if we can use them to our advantage, God bless us. There's the break with two palms out, says the other. Catching a knife with two palms out. There's the breakout sellers gone. Those of you that are retail that have are either becoming consistently profitable or have accounts, you know, relatively small, you need to be at break even now if you're short. Make sense? You do not want this to make a new high. You don't even want to be involved. If this comes back up 
and test three you want to be just you know what give me my money back I'm not interested in playing anymore make sense you need to think that way you've taken my time you've taken my money but I'm not going to lose any money. I had a nice opportunity. Take a look. You had 100 and, uh, 127. You got short at 128. So you had 127 pips in this thing. You cannot let it turn into a loser. Because that is 3 to 1, right? You got 3 to 1 in... You had 3 to 1 in your hand. You've got to be at breakout. Break even. Period. Got to be. Any questions on that? This is the middle game. Okay, this is the middle game, and it's extremely important. Those of you who had me in mentoring in the last two weeks, we've talked about the middle game and how important it is, and I've showed examples the last couple uh, breakfast sessions. The middle game is extremely important. It really can make or break your trading. Tim, if you were one of the stop-out victims, would you consider a re-entry? No, I wouldn't. Do you mean at this point? No. Because, Peter, let me give you an example. We had a guy here, man, Carlos, you can remind me, three years ago, um, one day the S&P went up 45 points, okay? And he had it in his mind that it was topping out. And he got short seven times in a row. Now, I wasn't in breakfast session. He wasn't in mentoring. He was just in the general population, but... He lost more than 45 handles in the S&P being short. It cost him more than the entire range of the day. And he, and he went from, he lost a nearly million dollar account. He lost everything. Lost his house. How about that? So my answer is, yeah, isn't that terrible? P of course Peter's seen it. Any, anybody that's traded on the floor has seen guys. You know, I, I can't speak about the New York exchanges. At the Mercantile Exchange, there's a set of escalators. You see them going up, down the escalator, right? They're going down to go to their house, and they got to arrange how they're going to pay. <clears throat> School of averaging up, says Pete. Thank you. Yeah, doubling up. Double up and throw up, right? Okay, so... 56% of the market is going to sell this. The reason why I don't enter, Peter, if I was wrong here and I got stopped out, time to clear my head. There'll be another day and another trade. I, don't, I generally don't take another trade that day, period. I know that sounds harsh, but again, I don't have to trade. I don't feel like I need to trade. I trade. If, you know, you got my money today, that's fine. I'll see you tomorrow. I'll come back with... Because think how long I've, I've, I've chased this thing. I'm, I had clear focus over here when I, when I put the plan together. Over here, my focus is not the same. That makes sense, everybody? I, if I got stopped out, I'm beat up. I'm tired. I've been chasing this for a long time. I'll just come back. There'll always be another trade. That's right, Carlos. All right. So let's see what happens to us. Okay, so... I know you didn't see, even the people that did get short didn't see this trade turning into this type of spiral. We're, Petra, all we're going to do is about three bars. But okay, you'll see it on the rest of it. Petra, have a good weekend. But what I thought was we, we have gone from long with impunity, everybody's long, you can't hurt me, if this thing tips over, imagine how many people have to get out. Everybody. And the door is really small. So here's the first frequency. And you can take your property here if you want. Now, we do have one problem. Can anybody tell me what the problem is with this trade? There is a problem. That's well, okay. I'll, uh, Jeff, I will. I will say it's gone vertical. Okay. There's no, well, okay, and there's no place for a stop. I get it. But there's there's something else. There's something insidious here. Something you better pay attention to. 
Yep, I get it to, to stop as far away and all that. Right, wait, hang on. What's wrong with this trade? Has let's I don't even want to go vertical. Let's just let's just do this. There's a problem with this trade. What is it? We haven't gone vertical yet. There's a problem with this trade. What is it? Take a look in front of you. Not that it's still in the range. What? Not that it's difficult to set a target. Not that people have not, you know, it's not, it does have a lot of energy. That's not the problem. What's the problem? There is a problem. There's a, there's a mathematical problem with this, with this change. It's not that it's got the lower maximum excursion coming up. But what does that mean, Matt Cube? You're on the right trail. But what does it mean? Upsloping lines. Okay, I'm short, and the profit target is an upsloping line, right? Thank you. Ding, 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 Keith. Great job. What does that mean? So this is playing into my thoughts about the spiral. Ouija, if you thought I was thinking to the right, I don't know if you thought about this. As I drew this, it's not that the probable path is up. That is maybe potential. The profit target will shrink over time. Thank you, Aaron. Right? Profits erode with time, says Ouija. Aaron, we got it. Paul's got it as well. Okay? So that means I need this to unfold quick, right? This is not one of those trades where I can just sit there and watch it unfold for days and days and days because it's upsloping. I'm going to get collared, right? I need this thing to explode. Make sense? Which is one reason why you might consider, I did not, but why you might consider taking profits at the first upsloping line. Because unless it goes vertical, if it starts to go horizontal, your profits are going to start to disappear, right? Okay, so we really, it's going to be difficult for us to trail stops on this because we really can't let time go against us. We need this to become an absolute, we need everybody to go, crap, I'm out, and start to sell. That's where our first high target is, correct? Yeah. So, Ouija, when I was thinking about the spiral over here, what I thought was, if they sell, this could become crazy, and we might get something completely vertical. And so I'm willing to use an upsloping line. With me? The high percentage target would be right here, absolutely. So if you want to take your money here, that's fine. And you're going to get three point. Wow, let's figure out what it is. All right, you're risking 40. You're going to get 145. So it's it's 1,500 bucks. Nothing wrong with that, right? But it will shrink with time. So if you took your profit there, I have no problem with that. I'm thinking that if this thing goes off the ledge, there's going to be people committing suicide. Breakout sellers. Now it's forced everybody to think about selling. So if you took your profit here, I got no problem with that. I'm all good with that, right? Look at it go. Closing on its low. Now I'm at double the range. Look. One vertical bar, two vertical bars, third vertical bar. I get to double the range. I'm my. I got my order in the market. When do I put my order in the market? Can you guess? I don't make it go live until these are filled. But right here, it's part of the plan, right? Yeah, the moment I get filled, put my order in, right? You just have it laying there. I don't care. OCO, that's exactly right. One cancels the other. Exactly right. Okay? All right. I don't want to overstay my welcome. Now we close up here. Remember, I wanted to get long at 124. Remember that? So we get down to 124 in small change and close at 125.60.
It's 4 o'clock, so I'm not in the trading room. Dopey me. I mean, look, this is a nice trade. This is a magnificent trade. I don't, I don't want to downplay the trade. But, okay, so this worked out great. Wish I could read it. 373. So it's almost 10 to 1. Okay? However, in the back of my mind, I wanted to find a way to get long down here on the pullback, remember? And I did abandon it to get short. Would you think to cover in reverse? Well, it's a good question, Pete. There's a problem with covering and reversing, though. I got no stop, man. I do reversal trades rarely. Of course, Andrews did them all the time, but I very, I rarely stop and reverse. Here's the problem. This is a mountain fill right here. So I have no stop below here, right? Yeah, there is a mountain right here, but I need uh, I need structure below the mountain, and there isn't any structure. So I'd be may using a cash stop, and that don't work for me. So as I get back to the trading room, to do my, now I'm doing my my long-term positions. I do this at 4.30. All right, so it's 5 o'clock. I'm in the middle of doing my long-term positions. Um, the gray beards are filling me in. I'm going, ah, oh, okay, where's the close? Shit. So I take a look. Okay, this is our, take, take a look at our pullback here. So if I wanted to use this as a stop, that's that's about what my buy order would look like right there. See it? If I wanted to use this spike low as a stop. You with me? Uh-oh, maybe I'll get filled. That'd be nice, wouldn't it? I'm not trying to stop and reverse, but now I see it. This is an inflection point. The question is, is it going to break the two new lows? All right. Nope. That's still a risk because the spike hasn't been tested. That's true, Tim. But you know what? It never came into play anyway. Where are we live? So, I mean... Never came into play. Never did work my way into the long. And frankly, now... As I look at it now, I have to be thinking top shoulder. I'm not. I'm not going to be stubborn now and force myself into a long position at this point, right? Because now, I do have to wonder: Did we just sell the top, and is this a pullback? So I waited till now to draw in the post post trade lines so to speak now what what do you think didn't take it but what do you think of this idea Does it make sense? I like this better than I do sticking with the long idea. So you'd have to do it like this. What is the ATR? The ATR is actually moving up to 39 now. So at this point, actually, now you're going to have to go wider. So hang on. Probably would have worked at this point. 20... To 60 to, I don't know, 50, 55, something like that. You got to pay, pay attention to your ATR, and as it widens out, 
you got to adjust, okay? So now, hey, dude, it works. Amos was a genius. Yes, he was. Best, best position trader I've ever seen. And I've ever studied. Yeah, but you also have to struggle with your long-term long also. No, no, I, I've got given up on the long. Peter, seeing this and this sell-off, I immediately, I've lost the interest in being long at this point. I didn't catch the short. Oh, the fund? Yeah, but I, but Peter, I don't even think about that. That that's that's portfolio trading. Okay, and and I don't mix and match what we're doing here with portfolio trading. Okay, those get evaluated on dailies, and this is just a. Well, yeah, it's. I wouldn't suggest anybody else try and juggle it until you master intraday trading, which is what this is, or trades that last you know a couple days to a, a couple weeks. Um, if you master those, then you can income trade. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this would be like your 401k, maybe. That's what it is for the queen, right? It's like four million in one, four billion in one, whatever. But yeah. So I don't mix and match them. I don't. I don't even think about it, Peter. They're separate trades. They have separate plans, and you know, steady Eddie donuts. Yeah, that's what this stuff is. So I, I don't think about it. Uh, same thing as, um, you know, in the euro, for example. The fund had a huge position in the short, the euro, 139 and a half. Just got out at 105 and a quarter. I don't even know where it is today. But um, because it was so close to uh, the original idea was par, 125 then par. Get down to 105, I think it's time to just walk away. The Oh yeah, it was it was a that that trade alone. If you were in uh, evening with the master, would have made you thirty four percent on your account. Thirty four percent. So, can I get two lots? Yeah, there you go. So that's what we do in evening with the master. For those of you that wonder, um, and we talked about that trade live, and a, a handful of people caught that. Not everybody stayed into one hundred five. Some people got out at one one twenty five. Some other people got out at one fifteen, and some people actually are still short saying par um, yes and oil as well um, we caught oil at 105 um, still short oil oil still making new lows um, and frankly we're I'm part of the a consortium that really pushed oil off the ledge another crazy year coming up yeah we're having a Having a good time. Now, both of those are long-term. The funds are in those, but they were in from late last year. So, um, Euro's been booked. Oil, no reason to book it yet, I don't think. Um, so, But we still trade. I'm not trading for the fund right now. I'm just uh, managing the long-term positions that it has uh, has sitting in. And it's got a bunch. Do you advise their uh, their students into positions in evening with masters? I don't advise Peter, but I show you exactly what I'm thinking. I don't give tips or advise trades, but I'll show you exactly what I'm thinking. We pushed people. Let me give you an example. We pushed people into getting long Facebook at what? Well, anybody remember BJ was at 23.62? Seem about right. It took us six weeks to talk people into getting long. And of course, you know it's. Yeah, th and and it's been up to uh, 2632, 2332, and it's been up to, it's basically at its high. It's been up to 80 and change, and it's within a buck of its high. 2332 says BJ. But you didn't hear that here. No, it, you, we, no, we'd never say that we. But to get people going, we spent about the 22 calls and sold 20 puts. Don't know what that means, Peter. It's too smart for me. Yeah, I can't give advice. That's right. Facebook, I get it. No, I don't mean. I'm not. I don't do options. That's what I mean, Peter. I'm a. I'm a simple, outright guy. Even though I managed the biggest options house in the world for about two years, basically all they did is steal my money by giving me all these great I positions. All you know, 
knockouts and all these other trade I, all these other ways to express my position versus just cash in the end I would have made a hundred times more trading cash which is why I'm just a cash trader so risk reward on options is not within our parameters I just it's another level of complexity if you're capable of it go ahead it's fine so oh yeah sure it is like him I'm not going to mention but it is like him ask him if he knows what CRT is or was okay so we bought CRT the Ritchie brothers retired because I bought them out got rid of them because we ended up we were so big we were trading with ourselves on the exchanges we were 45 percent of the open interest but the moment I realized that it was like what the hell <laughs> so anyway did you guys learn something today um, other than I mean it was a it was an interesting trade it was not my normal trade it was very helpful seeing your engagement into the charts as your logic changed that's well that's basically what I wanted to go through is because I, I kind of felt like I was stuck on one idea and it wasn't working for me and then all of a sudden it was like oh wait a second here and Al got it a couple bars before me so good good Al good job and you know that really you guys should be in the same area. Don't get stuck. It's okay to follow the idea while it's working, but at some point, if the market changes, make sure you change with it. And of course, I didn't get my opportunity to get long, but you know what? Maybe that's a good idea. Peter says, I got to tell you, it's never easy. Peter, it doesn't ever get easy. Ever. I don't care how good you are. It doesn't ever get easy. Lots of new stuff, good. I saw something in the ranges, but need to work on emulating it. Okay, let me, let me know, Reese, if, if you got ideas or need help. Okay, so for September, the Brilliant Logic Trust, these kidneys will get, no, they'll get sorted out, Lewis, don't worry. Um, September, going to have fun again. Similar short opportunity to Swiss and Yen, that's what I heard. Yu King says, I think Canada was the most difficult to pull off. It just happened to be something I would be watching. Swiss is not in my five things to watch, Yu King, for day trading, but Yen is, but I happen to be following Canada. So, so you could have caught it in Swiss, could have caught it in I Actually, I think there was a big move in the, was there a big, Robbie, were we talking about the pond or were we talking about Canada yesterday? I forget. <coughs> yeah, same move in the pound as well, right? And Robbie just getting missed, just missed getting filled. A couple pips off. Um, so, September, again, we're going to recreate my trading desk. You'll be on a plane on Monday? Okay, Scotty. Travel safe, buddy. Um, always, be the re always be the recordings. So, we're, we're going to recreate my trading, my trading desk, and you guys are free to, you know, when I'm not, when we're not in class, to come and pull up Ensign and take a look at past sessions and rifle through my Ensign as long as you don't erase stuff. And, um, we're still looking for suggestions, so if, you know, if you're coming and there's ideas that you think would be interesting, we've got five days, um, open to ideas. Shane's thinking, I'm thinking, even my IT guy Kevin is thinking, he came up with the idea of, hey, let's just recreate the trading desk. So um, if you have ideas, that's fine. Um, Shane is not coming. He will not come east of the Rockies, he says. It will be on session in University of Arizona Monday. Oh. I will be on session at the University of Arizona. Cool. Enjoy. Now, Shane won't come. That's okay. Maybe he'll do one in Vegas. He will and the water runs out to the west. <laughs> okay. Let's surprise him and show up at his house. I couldn't get enough people to go west. We talked about Peter. Instead of going to Chicago, why don't we go to Vegas or L.A.? And nobody wanted to do it. So... University of Arizona is great. John Lewis and mining asteroids is a legend. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I used to go, actually, their doctors are quite good. Um, I talked at one point, I talked about um, about uh, teaching there. They approached me about uh, teaching physics there, actually, Reese. But um, they're not set up for virtual 
and the commute is too long and that that's too that's too far for me but it's a great place i really like the university i'm, I'm actually kind of hoping one of my kids go there i think it is a forward-thinking university unlike um um asu which is they just want to get as many students as possible so can we get shane like the a team did with mr t on the plane no i don't, I don't think so let's just, you know what he'll take care of market geometry while we're away so so to speak so anyway if you got ideas send them to me or send them to al or put them on the forum um expect a mailing today tomorrow whatever with all the links and whatever and um the university or the uh, uk universities really suck compared to places like arizona yeah it's hard to believe arizona's progressive but some of them are so i'll, t I'll see you all on monday have a great weekend hopefully i'll get the mailing all put together and we'll get a list together and we'll check your coats and all that other stuff and if you got ideas let me know hopefully you enjoy it it's, it's 10 o'clock i'm gonna let you guys go take care i'll talk to you soon